We've spent a lot of time so far in this course talking about atoms. And atoms are, of course, the building blocks of everything. But one rarely finds atoms all by themselves. The only elements that exist in a monatomic form are the noble gases. And so I like to think of the noble gases as being the only happy atoms. Every other atom is unhappy. And the foundational principle of chemistry is that unhappy atoms try to get happy. Now, I should point out that I've taught over 50,000 students and I've only had three students who seem to get a little confused by this issue of happiness and unhappiness. How can atoms be happy or unhappy? Does this mean that they get angry? Does this mean that they get sad? Does this mean that they laugh? How do atoms laugh? And in two of those cases I know that they were taking the mickey but in one case this student was really confused about the idea that atoms had feelings. Atoms don't have feelings. Okay. Okay. This is just my way to try to put it across in order to explain some of these fundamental ideas of chemistry that we're going to talk about in these next few movies. Because fundamentally, atoms are unhappy. The only happy atoms are the noble gases. So therefore, atoms try to become like noble gases. Now, they can't become gases. They can't change what's in their nucleus. But what they do do is they can affect the number of electrons. And so for us, happiness is defined as having the same number of electrons as a noble gas. There are three ways, three main ways in which atoms can do this. They can lose one or more electrons. They can gain one or more electrons or they can share one or more electrons and the fancy word for sharing electrons is covalent. Now we're going to see atoms that lose electrons first of all in from the main group in the S and the P block. We're going to see atoms that will gain electrons in the P block. We'll also see and talk about how D block or transition metal atoms will lose electrons and then when we move on in a much more lengthy series to the covalent concept we'll be focusing predominantly on main group atoms those in the S and the P block. So let's start off with losing electrons and we'll start off talking about main group atoms. Metal atoms like to lose electrons. So let's start off with sodium here. Okay, what do we know about a sodium atom? Well, we know its symbol is Na. We know it has 11 protons because the atomic number is 11. If it's got 11 protons in the atom, it has 11 electrons. We can write the electron configuration for those 11 electrons as neon 3s1. And it's unhappy. Why is it unhappy? Because it is not a noble gas. So what can it do to get the same number of electrons as a noble gas? Well, here's sodium right here with 11 electrons. The nearest noble gas to it is neon, which has 10 electrons. And so sodium would say to itself, because of course sodium atoms are extremely intelligent, right? Um, I've got 11 electrons. Happiness would be having 10 electrons. So what I can do is lose an electron. Now, if it loses an electron, that means it now has 10 electrons. Which electron would it lose? Well, it would obviously lose the 3s electron because that's what's keeping it from being a noble gas. OK, and once it's got that noble gas electron configuration, it is happy with a little yellow smiley face. I hope you can see that yellow smiley face. That yellow really isn't very good, is it? Now, the trouble is it still has 11 protons. So now there is an imbalance of charge. It's got 11 positives in the nucleus, only 10 negatives outside the nucleus balancing that out. So overall, it is a positive. And we would write that Na with a little superscript plus. Things that are positive are called cations. And so we would call this a sodium cation. OK, sodium atom, unhappy, loses an electron to make a sodium cation happy. Now, all the alkali metals have one valence electron, that S electron that is keeping them from being a noble gas. Potassium is argon, 4s1. Rubidium is krypton, 5s1. Cesium is xenon, 6s1, and so on. So all alkali metals that have that noble gas with one S electron configuration, and look at how I've written this generic electron configuration of alkali metals. Noble gas in parentheses, and then an S 
electron past that, whichever shell it happens to be. So lithium would be helium, 3, 1s, excuse me, lithium would be helium, 2s1, sodium, we've already seen neon, 3s1, and so on. What those alkali metals want to do, get rid of that s electron to get the noble gas configuration. So that means lithium becomes Li+, plus, which we call a lithium cation, potassium becomes K+, plus, a potassium cation, and so on. Staying on that same theme, metal atoms want to lose electrons. <clears throat> and let's move along one in the periodic table to magnesium. All right, what do we know about a magnesium atom? Its symbol is Mg, it has 12 protons, 12 electrons. Its electron configuration is Ne3s2, and it is unhappy because it's not a noble gas. So if you're a magnesium atom and you know the periodic table, you say, what's my nearest noble gas? Well, it's going to be neon. How do I get from 12? electrons down to 10 electrons lose two electrons so the 12 electrons become 10 the electron configuration becomes neon it thus becomes happy another little yellow smiley face still has 12 protons so now the imbalance of charge is two so we would write this mg2 plus it's still mg because it still has 12 protons but now it's got too few electrons to balance out those 12 protons so it's mg2 plus and we would call this a magnesium cation again alkaline earth metals there that second group group 2 group 2a whichever particular sequence you want to use their general electron configuration is a noble gas ns2 okay so beryllium would be helium 2s2 magnesium would be neon 3s2 and so on all of them will lose those two electrons get down to the noble gas configuration calcium becomes calcium 2 plus strontium strontium 2 plus etc okay alkali metals unambiguously you will see them as one plus cations alkaline earth metals you will see them unambiguously as two plus cations get that stuck in your heads now and that will sort out an awful lot of bad issues later on if you can staying on that theme let's move along a group to the icosagons a good example of that being aluminium what do we know about aluminium the standard old stuff right here it is right here it's got s2p1 for its electron configuration three valence electrons unhappy what's it going to want to do lose those three electrons giving it 10 electrons now of course it is happy it has that neon um, electron configuration trouble is now we got a uh, three difference right so we call this aluminium three plus and it is an aluminium cation the icosagen metals, and I've crossed out boron because boron, of course, is a metalloid, despite this loony trend to start trying to call it a non-metal, whatever, nobody dares to call it a metal. So gallium can become gallium 3 plus there, just like its friend aluminium. Indium can become indium 3 plus. Now, I tried to emphasize the unambiguous ambiguity of what alkali metals do and alkaline earth metals do because there is a wonderful thing called the inert s effect that starts kicking in once you get past having transition metals and even more so once you have inner transition metals okay and remember the transition metals are floating around in this little gap here between calcium and gallium strontium and indium barium and thallium and between barium and thallium you've also got the f block starts to creep in now the effect of having those electrons that are going to be not valence electrons if you remember but they are between the nucleus and the valence electrons and that is that they can shield the effect of the nucleus in other words the the whole behavior of the atom starts to become a little bit wishy-washy and so on and what that means is for our icosagens they would like to lose the S2 and the P1, which in the case of aluminium, unambiguously turns it into neon. But they can also keep the S2 and just lose the P1. Okay, so that would, in that case, for example, gallium can make gallium plus, and that would just kind of stick it down here, just like zinc 2 plus. Okay, nice and stable, all shells are filled, but instead of losing all of your shells, losing all of your 
um, valence electrons, it just loses the P electron. So that means gallium can make gallium 3 plus, which is its preferred one, but it can also make gallium plus. Indium, when you get into studying indium chemistry, very, very, very undecided. You can have indium 3 plus, no problem. Indium plus, no problem. Get down here to thallium, and thallium plus is actually the most common or the more common, if I'm going to be totally correct, um, cation associated with thallium. You see thallium 3 plus, but not nearly as commonly as thallium plus. Because if you remember, you've got D electrons messing around here, D electrons influencing here, D and F electrons influencing when you get up to thallium. Generally, if we look at the periodic table and we shield out all the metalloids and the non-metals, then what we can say is the alkali metals will always make one plus cations. They lose that valence electron. Alkaline earth metals will always make two plus cations. They lose their two valence electrons. The icosagens will start off making plus three. As you go down the group, the plus three becomes less common. The plus one becomes more common. Same for tin and lead. And I'm not going to mess around with these sort of fake elements down the bottom here. But tin or lead, start off tin plus four and plus two. Lead, pretty much plus two. And then you get to bismuth, it can be plus five or plus three. So that's your behavior of the main group metals. They lose electrons and you can predict which cations they're going to form. You can predict how many electrons they're going to lose. I also said at the start that transition metals will lose electrons to make cations. Unfortunately, as you'll see on this slide, it's not nearly as easy to predict all the time how many electrons a transition metal is going to lose to form those cations. Anyway, if we look at the D block, uh, their generic electron configuration, when we look certainly at the first row of the D block, 4s2, 3dn. So scandium, 4s2, 3d1, manganese, 4s2, 3d5, and so on. Okay. Now, first thing to get in your heads and remember is that all except those in the scandium group make two plus cations. Okay. And if we look at just a selection of the electron configuration of transition metal cations, you'll see, as we pointed out here, they all have in common the 4s2 there. And they lose those four electrons first. So they all make two plus except for scandium. Now, why do they lose the 4s electrons first? Well, the answer to that is that the 4s electrons come from the fourth shell. The 3d electrons come from the third shell. If you think all the way back to our little um, solar system model, the fourth shell is further away than the third shell. So even though we put electrons in to the 4s before we take them before we put them into the 3d, we'll take them away from the 4s before we take them away from the 3d. Get that locked in your head. OK, and the evidence for it, at least the low level evidence for it, is that all of them make two plus cations. OK, so titanium two plus would be argon three D two. Manganese two plus would be argon three D five. Iron two plus would be argon three D six. Zinc two plus would be argon three D ten. Now, one splits the transition metals generally up into early and late transition metals. So I've boxed out in this pretty little blue color the early transition metals. Now, they have got few enough D electrons and they're close enough to the previous noble gas that as well as making those two plus cations that they all make, they can lose all the electrons to become like a noble gas configuration. So if we think of titanium, OK, it has one, two in the 4, 4S, one, two in the 3D, four electrons away from being a noble gas. Remember, there's the um, S electrons, the S block up here. OK, so titanium, two to there, another two to the noble gases. Scandium loses three to get down to its closest noble gas. So therefore, we will see scandium 3+, we'll see titanium 4+, vanadium 5+, chromium 6+, plus, 
and manganese 7 plus and these are all ones in which the atom has lost all its electrons down to the noble gas okay doing just what you would predict from the uh, behavior that we saw for the main group elements okay however having lost the 4s electrons these early transition metals can also lose an in-between number so for example titanium loses two it's lost its 4s loses four it's lost all of its electrons but you'll also see titanium three plus in which it lost both of its 4s electrons first and then one of the 3d electrons with vanadium you'll see vanadium 3 plus and 4 plus chromium you'll see 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus manganese you can see 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus and 6 plus the early transition metals can pretty much make any anion any cation excuse me that they want okay now i've put in bold here the more common cations formed by each of them so manganese for example you'll usually expose manganese 2 plus 7 plus and 4 plus you'll rarely see although you can see 3 plus 5 plus and 6 plus now the late transition metals that's in green boxes here they can lose those two electrons that we've already talked about the two valence electrons the two 4s electrons so iron can make iron 2 plus cobalt 2 plus nickel 2 plus copper 2 plus and zinc 2 plus but then they can't lose many more the maximum they can go down to is d5 so for example if we think about iron it is seen as iron 2 plus that we already know about and iron 3 plus iron 2 plus it loses the 4s2 so it becomes argon 3d6 and then iron 3 plus it loses another of the d electrons going to argon 3d5 you're not going to lose another d electron because what have you got there you got a half filled D subshell half filled D subshells very very nice and stable it's going to be almost impossible to remove another electron from there you can see it when you look at really weird vague freaky compounds but iron you see as iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus pretty much it same for cobalt you see it as 2 plus and 3 plus you don't even see it going down to the 3d5 to make 4 plus nickel extremely rare to see nickel in anything other than nickel 2 plus and zinc you will never see in anything other than zinc 2 plus because let's see what zinc does after it loses its two s electrons it's down there to a filled d subshell remember what we said about filled d subshells really 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 stable now the weird one that some of you will have at the back of your minds i remember chromium and copper have those exceptional electron configurations well chromium it's an early transition metal it does whatever it wants copper on the other hand remember is argon 4s1 3d10 so while it makes copper 2 plus it will also make copper 1 plus because when it loses that one electron it's down there at that filled d subshell transition metals fun beautiful i love transition metal chemistry not nearly as predictable as the main group chemistry